All right, lads, welcome back to me podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy. Mick Thomas here. How are you? How you doing? Thanks for coming back. Uh, thanks for liking, subscribing, sharing, and all that stuff. Thanks for the comments, the good ones, the bad ones, the thumbs up, thumbs down. Appreciate it all. All feedback is good feedback, except the bad feedback. Then that's not good feedback. Joking, don't give a shit, but I do appreciate it that you do, uh, you do take the time out of your busy day to let me adjust this. You do take the time out of your busy day to write on my wall and stuff like that. I'm available everywhere: Spotify, iTunes, um, Podbean, whatever the fuck you get your podcast. That's where you can get cheaper than therapy. Also, check out my other podcast, the Almost Irish Podcast, with two of my fellow comedians and friends, Dan Barry, Dennis Rooney. Uh, it's a funny show. Check it out. It's a funny show. I don't have to do all the lifting on that one. Well, I do sometimes. Let's be honest. Um, so yeah, and I, I appreciate that. I really do. So uh, it was a slow week, I guess, in the news, right? Nothing really going on now. It's the fucking. It just goes on, don't it? Really, it, like, doesn't everything just keep keep moving to the next thing, and and then the. the the world keeps spinning, I guess, but the, the, the bullshit stays the same. You know, everyone's outrage is something different. In a like it's you gotta change your your profile picture to I stand with Israel now or whichever one you decide, whichever side you pick. Um right, you gotta make that your, your profile thing. You gotta you gotta go to that protest now and put that on. So people know you're making a difference. Because you put up uh, that blue thing. Remember, people know you made it. You helped by doing that. So keep up the good work, guys. Keep up putting up blue uh, on your screen because it makes a difference and makes you feel better about yourself. But good for you. Good for you. Um, you know, the, the pollen is out in crazy numbers now. And I, you know, some people didn't like that I put a tweet up saying that if you suffer from allergies, it means God doesn't like you and he made you weak <laughs> which is kind of like look i don't suffer from allergies i got pollen in my throat now and it's kind of scratchy but that's not really me suffer from allergies that's just the fucking pollen that's in the air but it's just so funny to watch people cry and die and you know just teary-eyed all day long and uh your god hates you that's why that's why that happens kidding of course kidding um yeah slow news week so I'll, i mean i'll tell you what i had going on i'll make this a quick episode because i have shit to do and uh, i don't have that much to report on but i was up in in pens in pennsylvania mohegan sun wilkesbury this weekend and i had a blast i really had a blast um i was with comedian dan barry and dan is kind of uh, a cock blocker not in relation to hey i'm gonna try pick up some chiquitas that's not mexican food that's women um not in that sense but in relation to the type of things i like to do when i'm on the road dan doesn't like to do any of them you know um and we'll talk about that on the almost irish podcast in in detail you know like i i wanted to go uh you know whenever, whenever i want I, I, I like to eat you know, and, and if you're in, in Mohegan Sun, there's no real nice place to eat that's healthy. And you all know me, I'm a, I'm a health fanatic. And there's nothing up there. It's just fucking burgers. And we went to this Irish place, uh, this authentic Irish to the point where when you talk to the staff, they go, are you fucking with me? Is that your real accent? Uh, and it gets old. That gets so old. And, it, you know, you fucking go up and it's ju just like, ah. Uh, it's the worst food, and then obviously because of the worst food, it's the same. Like, what kind of body type people are going to be eating that kind of food? And it's just walruses waddling around. You know what I mean? And it, it's I got to look at them now for my whole weekend, and it, it really, really upset me. <laughs> but it was fun, man. It was really, really fun up there. You know, Dan was cock blocking in relation to, you know, he wouldn't go to the movies with me which i like to do he wouldn't work out which i like to do and uh he wouldn't he didn't want to go to walmart i had to drive i had to go to walmart which to be honest with you was a disappointment and i like going to a good walmart everyone knows i'm a fan of the walmart i don't know if that's an ego thing because i like to walk in and feel better about myself when you leave a walmart you go god aren't i at least i'm not that 
right? When you come out of Walmart, you go, at least I'm not that. I could be that, but I'm not that. So, you know, fucking, I, I, I miss, you know, he, he just doesn't want to do anything like that, you know? But we did play golf. We did play golf on a Saturday morning. And that, that was fun. And again, we are not good golfers when we go up there. We're not good at all at golf. And uh, there was three people in front of us that were just, we're not as good as they thought. Like, we know we're shit. These guys thought they were dead shit. You know, they would line, get up on the ground and hold the putter up and line themselves up. You know those fucking assholes? And it'd be different if they were able to mat the talent match those little extra steps that made you better. They were all dog shit. And there was only two of us, and they were holding us up. Holding us up. And we got up there, we finally kind of like, lads, let us play through. And they blamed a bear, a bear on the course. That's why, uh, that's why they were dragging their fucking heels. Right? That's why they were dragging their heels. But, uh... Yeah, I'm kind of all, all over the place what I'm talking about. But we went to um, the the shows at Mohegan Sun were fantastic, right? Dan came up, Dan did, did a guest spot. And it's always fun, man, to get up there. I mean, no matter how much I don't like the people in the town. But, you know, uh, the, the, the audiences were great. They turned up and they were a lot of fun. They were fucking a lot of fun. And I'd never been uh, heckled. I don't really get heckled, but this one guy tried something. Which I think was hysterical. I was talking about tattoos, I think, and I and I asked this one woman in the audience. She was kind of showing me her tattoo, and I go, "Oh, what? What do you have on, on, on your tattoos?" And this is how annoyed I was at this. She was with her husband, a big burly guy, and she said, "I have on this on my arm. I have my father, my mother, and my sister, or something like that, and I think they're all dead." And then her husband went in front of everybody. He went, um, "Go ahead, big guy, make that funny." And without skipping a beat, I just went, I wish your I goes, I wish your name was on her other arm. Boom. Mic drop place went crazy. I could have ended the show right there and then. But I didn't. It was just fun, man. The crowds were fun. The crowds were a lot of fun. And uh, and then on the Saturday night there was a gentleman up front and he was a former Marine. And it goes to show you the way people people are, right? And he here here's the thing about former Marines, and this is not uh an insult to them. They 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 dress. They always dress in in the war they fought in. Do you know what I mean? Like he had this hat on that said whatever war that he was in, and he was an older gentleman. His name was Danny. His name was Danny. He was such a fucking funny, cool guy. And I said to him something like, "Where did you get the hat?" And he was like, "Oh, that was the war I served in." And I said, "I didn't. I didn't know they sold souvenirs at wars." Because that's an American thing, isn't it? Like, you'll have someone like Vietnam War, Korean vet, and they all have the hats of the wars they fought in. So I just thought, oh, like, is it in the war? You go over and there's a, <laughs> there's like a merchandise boot. <laughs> like, get me a blue t-shirt. Medium. What do you mean they don't have medium? Why would they have extra large? We're all soldiers. <laughs> right? So I didn't know they sold merch. So I said I didn't think they sold merchandise at the... Uh, at the wars. But anyway, he was fucking cool, man. And he was in a wheelchair. And, you know, and I and I, and I I I did the typical hacky thing that comedians do when the Marines are in the audience. Go, give him a round of applause, everybody. And that way the crowd loves me. And I got an aren't I great giving the Marine his uh, kudos. But Danny was a fucking night. And I remember his name because that, that was my dad's name. And uh, but he was just, just a genuinely nice guy, man. Very funny. He had his wife with him. And uh, so we're talking out outside the show. And it's amazing that when someone's in a wheelchair or have some sort of uh, disability or deformity, like nobody will, will talk about it. So I just went, what happened to you? <laughs> you know, what happened to you? And he was like, I was in a motorcycle accident. And um, he's like, I was going 40 mile an hour or whatever. And he hit, and he, I don't know the exact details, but I think he hit somebody and, you know, flew over the thing. And now he's in a, he's in a wheelchair. And I didn't tell him that I'm, going to be buying a motorcycle soon because i didn't want to i didn't want anyone bumming me out i didn't want danny bumming me out you know i already in my head have a motorcycle picked out that i'm going to get and i'm looking forward to spending the summer on it and i just didn't want danny to go like this is how fucking dumb i am and how like you know what i mean how immature i am it's like i, I want my motorcycle and you're not gonna stop me i don't give a shit danny that you are literally in a wheelchair you know 
He looked, he was in a wheelchair, the type of wheelchair that you would get, you would be in if you were like all the way paralyzed, but he was only from the legs down. So I thought the chair was a bit too fancy for his disability, if that makes sense. Um, I thought he could have been had just one of the wheelie ones. That would have been good enough. I'm just saying, I'm not nitpicking. He could have had... Anyway, the point was, he, he was in a really... Com- you know the ones that are in the comfy ones and they're like, they're gone from here down and they're like, you know, they can they move it with their mouth sometimes. Like, that's what I thought. That's how big the chair was. But Danny was in like a regular... He could have been in a regular chair. But he was cool as fuck, man. And we hung out, we laughed and we talked after the show for ages. Uh, even though I wanted to go home. I wanted, I wanted to get back in the car. But I didn't. I stood. I stayed there because that's... That's the type of hero I am. I mean, Danny's a hero. We know that. But I'm a different kind of hero because I stayed and I talked. Man of the people, me. Man of the people. Uh, I'm being a dick now on purpose, of course. But, um, yeah, man, I just, I just had a blast. I, I really did. I had a blast um, apart from eating shitty food. And I came home and I got home about Dandrove and I got home about, I would say, roughly 3 in the morning, 2.45, around 3 o'clock. And then I had to be at my boxing gym. What? Make you a box? Yes, I do. While you were sleeping. I do. I go boxing every morning. I'm up at 4 a.m. to go boxing. But this was Sunday morning. So, little known fact about me. What I am going to... Oh, yeah. Anyway, before I go, uh, move on to this. Thank you again. I just want to say thanks to everybody who came out to Mohegan Sun in, in Wilkes-Barre. Um, I pre- every place, by the way, in Wilkes-Barre is, looking, is hiring, by the way. So, uh, why... You know what I mean? Like, I, here's the problem with people. Are we giving away too much free money? Because every single fucking business was hiring in Wilkesbury. Thought it was very strange. We went to Dairy Queen to get ice cream. Hiring. McDonald's. Hiring. Got pulled over by the cops. I didn't want to say because damn, I get in trouble for that. We got pulled over by the cops. The cop pulled over. It's like, hey guys, we're hiring. Everybody's hiring. Walmart. Everywhere. Subway. In the Walmart. Everyone's hiring in up in Pennsylvania. Maybe the problem is we're giving away money for free. Maybe we should stop doing that. Maybe we should give people an incentive to get back out there because every place is looking for fucking people. Whatever. Let me go back. Long Island. So I drive out to uh, my boxing gym because that's where I am meeting. Uh, I met two of my buddies, Emily and Dakota. Dakota being one of the coaches of Strong Island Boxing because on June 12th, some of you may notice, some of you don't. On June twelfth, I am running a hundred miles. I'm going to run a hundred miles from the boxing gym out to Montauk Lighthouse and back again. So I'll just give you a moment to let that sink in. Good. Uh yeah, I'm doing it in one go. One one straight shot. Uh now yeah, I'm gonna stop and, and rest and stuff along the way. You know, I'm not you know, nobody just keeps going. But um, I'm going to go. So I'm going to run. We start at six in the morning from Strong Island Boxing uh, in Shirley. And we're going to run to Montauk Lighthouse and back again. I'm going to have uh, different stations along the way to rest up and, and, and that kind of stuff and eat and fuel up and move on. Um, why do it, you say? Because I'm a legend. I'm just, I'm, I'm just kidding. I just fuck it. I like, I like challenges. I like challenging myself. I like pushing myself. When the pandemic hit, I just took on because I can't sit still. I can't not be testing myself. And then when comedy shut down, I kind of put my energy into this because um, I could actively do it. Because I can, you can write all day long. With comedy, I can write jokes. I can write jokes. But if you're not getting on stage, it doesn't matter. So I pushed myself to do this, and I'm going to run 100 miles. Originally, I was going to do it for Carl LeBeau, who I did an episode a few weeks back, who my one of my good buddies who passed away recently. And But when I was going to do the run, he was still alive, and it was to help with his medical bills. Then that asshole died. So now I kind of figure, like, what am I going to raise money for, right? So I always kind of do St. Jude Children's Hospital. I all, I've raised thousands of dollars for St. Jude Children's Hospital, and they haven't even sent me a T-shirt. Look at, listen, I have saved, I don't know how many children's lives. I don't know how many kids are alive today because of me, and they won't even send me a fucking T-shirt. Nothing. Not even a fridge magnet. St. Jude's, well done. Whatever, I guess. So now I am going to raise money for a charity that gives kids cancer. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Relax. Jesus. Um, I'll talk about the charities in a moment that I'm trying to raise money for. But so we drive out. So now I'm on three hours sleep. And Emily, bless her, who's a savage, she drove 
she drove the car. So we drove to Montauk, stopping every 10 miles. We got it with spray paint, which is totally illegal, and marked up on the roads where our rest areas would be. So if anybody, any families or friends wanted to come out and just pull in and just, you know, give us food or, or whatever, like we're homeless people, um, begging, and by all means, you can join us for that too. So on the way back, we're, we're you know, we go to Montauk, um, we get something to eat out in Montauk real quick, and then we're driving back, and we're in one of the Hamptons, one of the really fucking, where the cops have no jurisdiction, that they're so wealthy that they have their own cops do you know what I mean? They're like, defund the police. Like, no, our fucking police force have machine guns. Like, you can get tickets in the Hamptons for playing your music too loud. If you drive by and you got your radio on and some rich fucker, like, I don't believe we like that song. The cops will pull you over and give you a ticket. That's the way the Hamptons work. So we pull over and I just mark my maybe nine, rest stop number nine, which is mile 90. And I see this cop car drive by and I just say to them, look, just leave it here. There's no point in driving off because if this guy has to chase us, he's going to be even more pissed. So we stay there on the side of the road. Sure enough, check the rear view mirror. Cop pulls up, rolls down the window. Emily, being an attractive young lady, just says to him, hi, officer. And he's like, hey, what are you guys doing? And she said, we're running a 100-mile race. We're marking out our things, blah, blah. And he gives this big smile. He goes, all right, have a good day. Very Matthew McConaughey of him. All right, all right, make sure you run 100 miles. Exactly, we got a couple lawbreakers. Whatever, it's not a good Matthew McConaughey. Drives off, and he was fucking gorgeous. He was the most gorgeous man I had ever seen in my life. And to the point where I was like, I know last week's episode was called Game Proud, but I looked at it, I was like, I don't, I don't get it. Is it. Am I gay now? Like that, like I fell in love with this man. I'm like, am I, am I gay? He's like tanned, big head of hair, kind of like mine. Uh, white, white teeth. I was like, this guy. He's gorgeous. He's gorgeous. So I'm driving. Like, I'm confused. Like, do I like? But I don't. I'm not attracted to penises. Do I? Am I gay? And then the car said, "Hey, Mick, look out there." And we see a bunch of women jogging. Like, all right, I'm back. <laughs> that was close. That was a close call. I'm back. Um. So yeah, we drive. You know, we do. We mark out the map. So that is happening on June twelfth. Now I'm not sure about what charity I'm going to raise money for. Um, I'm going to do. I'm going to announce that this week. I think. Um. This sounds weird and douchey, right? I, I always give the money to the sick kids. I do that. I do without, you know, because fuck it. Why not? It's got to go somewhere. I'm not going to save pets. Sorry. I know a bunch of people are going to write to me. Can you donate money to? No, I'm not giving any animals any money. I'm sorry. I'm not doing it. No, I, I just don't think animals can, you know, they get, get themselves out of it. There's enough people advocating for animals. I see the bumper stickers everywhere. I'm not, I'm not helping the animals. I'm not against animals. I'm just not running 100 miles for them. Fuck them. Um, you know, but I've always been, like, after talking to, like, I've always been pro-American military. People are like, well, how do you say that? You're not American. And I said, like, oh, no, I'm not. But I understand the sacrifice they make. And, you know, I come from a country where the army just are extras in movies. But the the American troops... Um, them as individuals. It doesn't matter about the politicians that send them into war, but the American troops will sign up any piece of paper and they're immediately ready. Like, I, I know a friend who was, he signed up and he went off and his only problem, his only hardship he ever had was he was in Korea. My friend Nikki was her husband and uh, and the only hardship he had is that porn was banned in Korea. So he was stationed there. So every day he couldn't get porn. And that was his... You know what I mean? That was his PTSD story. That was his lone survivor story. That was his Chris Kyle story, his platoon story, his Lieutenant Dan getting his legs blown off story. They would all sit around talking about PTSD stories. Lieutenant Dan, you ain't got no legs, Dan, Dan. Right? He lost his legs. I didn't think they piled shit that high. Full metal jacket. Remember that guy? Lone survivor, Mark Wahlberg, falling in the mountain. Chris Kyle, American sniper, fucking shooting people. All these people with PTSD problems. What happened to Rob? Couldn't get porn. But <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? His wife had to send him packages of porn with discs and it was fucking hysterical when she told me about it. Um, but my point is when that guy signed up, when Rob, who I'm making fun of right now as a joke, when Rob and people like him signed that piece of paper, they don't know. They don't know what they're signing up for. Uh, no, they do know what they're signing up for. They don't know where they're going to be sent. But they could be sent to deal with real, real you know, uh, real situations in their lives are in danger. Their lives are in danger the second they put pen to paper. And it's braver than anything I, ever, anything I could do. 
I'm being honest. And I do have American kids. I own two American kids and they could easily at some stage in their life want to sign up um, to be in the military. And I wouldn't stop them. I, could, I, I would try to talk them out of it because I'm like, listen, your dad's a coward. Why don't you be a coward too? It's safer. Um, but I'm very pro-military. So part of me wanted to do something for maybe wounded warriors. Uh, and then talking to Danny was just, it was such a great, he, the guy was so happy. Um, he was talking about his father was in a war, his grandfather, his great grandfather. Again, very like Lieutenant Dan. Remember that? Like he just shows this flashback all the way back to the Civil War. It's like a whole fucking family were always in the war. Um, and Danny was Welsh too. Like his ancestors were Welsh. And Thomas is actually a Welsh name, believe it or not. And uh, so I kind of was thinking on the way home, was like, you know, I've, I've always wanted to, to do, but it's kind of weird. You know what I mean? That like I look at myself as a foreigner, even though I'm a U.S. citizen. It's like, why would I raise, like, it's almost like they wouldn't want my money. They wouldn't want me to help. Um, so I'm definitely going to do something for St. Jude's. I always do. They're my number one charity to go to. But I might I might try to raise money for uh, wounded warriors. Or if you know, out there, anyone know anyone out there, a good um, a good uh, charity that does help uh, veterans, uh, I would, you know, I'd, be, I'd appreciate that. I'd appreciate the feedback. Um. But it's also for you. If you guys want to join us, you don't have to run 100 miles, but come out and run run five. If you've never run a mile before, come out and run a mile. Run five. Run 10. Run If you've never run a half marathon, run it with us. We're not going to be going that fast. Trust me. If you've never done a marathon before, let that be your time. Do the marathon with us. All right? You want to run, come run 50 miles. Run 100 miles if you want to. Everybody is invited. It's about getting everybody out there. It's my own personal challenge that I want to do myself. Emily want then I got talking to Emily at boxing and then now all of a sudden the whole Strong Island boxing in Shirley uh one uh, one of the most amazing places I have ever been to in my life in relation to camaraderie camaraderie <laughs> yeah they teach good words good grammar um camaraderie <laughs> fuck it idiot it's one of my favorite places, and they all got behind me for this run, and they're all going to help out. They're all going to help at rest stops. There's some, a lot of those fighters are going to jog with me for some along the way, myself and Emily, and some are going to try to do 50 miles, and some are going to join us when we're running through the middle of the night. And I wanted to talk about that. So, um, you know, come out and join us. All are welcome. All are welcome. We're, we're, we're meeting on June 12th at 6 a.m., and no matter what your level is of running, it's not. It's all about just camaraderie. Did I say it? I got the word wrong again? I know I did. Um, it's all about that, you know. It's all about just pushing yourselves, being a first time for everybody. If you've never, it's all about first. I don't mean anal. Uh, I've never done anal before. Maybe I'll go room. We're not about that. Um, but it's about first times for um, running and stuff, you know, for for really pushing yourself and testing yourself. It's going to be hot as balls because it's going to be June twelfth. Hopefully, it's not raining. But all are welcome to come out and join us. All right. So for more details, follow me on all the social media. I'm going to start advertising it this week. Um, I'm going to start posting about it. And again, so if you know any charities out there that could use an extra bit of cash, a bit of dosh that's not animal related, then by all means, please, please, please hit me up on all the stuff. So anyway, like I said, I didn't really have much to go into, nothing to report on or give my opinions or any of my comedic uh my comedic opinion on anything so i just wanted to come in and just chat this week for a little bit um yeah so again look thanks for tuning in thanks for listening like and subscribe and share and pass it on guys please tell people about the podcast share it up a little bit uh give me thumbs up give me comments watch it on youtube it's on youtube um and june 12th come join us for the run come join us for the run uh thanks so much for listening again guys i appreciate it and until next time i got no show to promote do i that i think of Nothing really that I want to, that's in stone that I want to mention. So anyway, next time guys, take care of yourselves and good luck to you. Good luck.